So there are my five senses represented by the hand. That's my conscious mind. That's the play of my senses. And me, that's me responding or listening to you present yourself. So you're going to be a hand talking to So as I'm taking what you're saying, it's going to be different for me than your Coherent holistic perception or being. 
What do you do? Go to your eye. Go to your ear. No, your ear was that one. Go to your proprioception for kinetic touch pressure. And smell. Maybe that, maybe that was smell. You know, it makes that good. That's the uh, uh, proprioception smell. Uh, so four senses, the COVID said, is what we are. Because the fifth sense, touch, is not a sense. It's the interplay of all of the four together, making coherency or fiveness. That's why he said in alchemy, there was a battle between those that said there were four basic elements versus five basic elements. So the interplay between four and five, the Chinese have five elements, we in the West have four. The four or five difference is tactility itself. It's the flipping back and forth. So, in the West we've got four senses, but when it all works together, we have fiveness. And that's because the tactile interplay of the four makes coherence. All right, so you have tact, you have tactile consciousness, that's being, you're awake, you're perceiving. To really know that, you have to disappear. Let's just make it like that. You have to go into a non-being state, and that would be sleep, and consciousness and unconsciousness. Now that's a tactile interplay itself. So the relationship between consciousness and unconsciousness, waking light, sleeping, dreaming light, is a tactile interplay. The interplay is the structure in everything. The basic structure is nothing is permanent. Wake, sleep, wake, sleep. But the action of altering, so you notice the difference, is tactility. That's why I have defined tactility as contrast. The action of noticing contrast is tactility. Um, now, I had said, Bob Marshall asked in that session with I that he found very valuable. Is tactility, does tactility, the interplay, exist in non-physical? Ion says no. So it's interesting that non-physical is this extreme bliss extension, this bliss state, which doesn't have the going back and forth. That's why you can't create in the non-physical. You don't have the contracts, you don't go back and forth. When you're in the physical, be like that, uh, you don't need to, uh, the more you become aware of tactility or the necessity of contrast to be cognizant, the less you need that, then you're forever like this and you never have to sleep. You're just this, constantly, in timeless, non-time, non-space, non-feel. So you wouldn't be that anymore, you wouldn't be that. You'd be what you're looking at and you'd be very perceptive about it. So this mind apparatus would not be the mediator. McClellan quotes um, Aristotle as saying, the soul is very close to the, well, we'll say the soul is very close to the hand. The hand is the extent, is the expression of the soul. But like man doesn't have a soul, where the soul is dormant, not, not involved. So when you're living without without um, a soul, then you're, you retrieve the forms of consciousness, which is a, the last page, page 297 on Take the Day, the recently programming of society with the tribal unconscious, that would be electric space, electric media, by the recently achieved forms of consciousness, not forms of unconsciousness, forms of unconsciousness are media. What are the recently achieved forms of consciousness? I asked Barry Nevitt, who proposed that sentence with the woman one day, what are the recently achieved forms of consciousness? He says, Finnegan's Wake. He needs a book as a recently achieved form of consciousness to be an anti environment to the tribal unconscious. Now that goes to page 52. Television kills telephony or telephony in Brothers Royal. The eyes demand their turn. Let them be seen. So the eye, through the book, getting its way, is retrieved not as a visually biased eye, 
by a not as a mutually biased, direct, or melodic, purposeful, infinite going I, but as a tactile I in, in synchronized harmonious relationship with the other senses. And so thinning its way is about a person dreaming <laughs> and processing the awakefulness of the five senses. And this interplay between the dreaming and the awakening, which you know filmmakers like uh, Kubrick or Fellini, they they mix reality and dream and hallucination in their movies, and they don't show the difference. So that confuses you. But that's the only way the movie can express tactility going back and forth. So all the arts and all the sciences of the 20th century are trying to visualize or hear musicians snap up or dance and be kinetic. Mercy Cunningham, Martha Graham. They're all trying to dance tactility because the sensory interplay that is the definition of tactility has been extended by electricity, which is a tactile nothingness, like our tactile sense. Electricity is not a sense. Well, what is it? You can't figure it out. Because it's an extension of the original unknowable tactility. So when our environment is electrified and is tactile, all the arts, painting, music, music, dance, smell, maybe sculpture, or sex, something like that, eating. All of those individual senses are extended to me. And how would we show up with that really square? Yeah. Oh, a <laughs> yeah, it would be my headphones falling off. Wow. Why do you guys have headphones falling off? That's a really square. Okay? It's negative. Well, they match. And that's what a page of fittings wind looks like. Mosaic pen. He was trying to show, visualize, in book form, uh, replay what James Joyce did. James Joyce showed uh, the android being visually in book form, and the fluid came later. He didn't want to rewrite Finney's weight, but he would explain how Finney's weight, uh, but why it happened, and what his goal was. Now, Don Field does a good description of what Finney's Weight's about that's complementary to the Bloom. So you read Field and the Bloom, that's a tactile replay between Don Field and Marshall Bloom. Um, but yes, Don so Bloom said, what is the role of the books in the tactile, extended tactile era? So he, he made books, uh, he thought, that were keeping up with the new tactile effect. That's why people found his writing strange. He jumped from topic to topic. He was trying to show the, the, the um, like he showed what's happening in science, what's happening in art, what's happening in uh, politics, what's happening in economics, what's happening in society and fashion in general. That interplay was organized around tactil tactility that's extended. So he's trying to show how each one of these activities, one, two, three, four, five, was molded by the new tactile extension. So how would you write that? You would write exactly as Finney's weight was done, but you're not going to redo it. So he, he went simple. He explained Finney's weight, which is like explaining the unexplained, unexplainable. So he had to jump around and do many topics in different parts of society, to lay out an inventory, he called it. And then that inventory would show the hidden effect of Cactus Square. Now that's all I'm going to say because. I don't know if anybody can follow what I'm saying. We follow it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. So I will now I would repeat this again later. You know, I can when someone else comes up in two days, say, okay, Bob, well, then ask the question you had, then I'll go into it again. But we you can't I cannot make you see what I'm saying completely. You have to make a perceptual act. Uh, retrace how Joyce got to retrace how Joyce got to fitting his way. You gotta go through those stages. You do that by thinking, reading, studying, observing, watching movies, engaging in culture, engaging your five senses. Well, let's say engaging your four senses to arrive at the coherency that the movie came up with. Five, five, tactical.